central theme of this webinar is going to be around timeless architecture. And it has become a word which the architects today are very much fond of using. They have been using the term timeless. It has been became so fancy and trendy to use it around a lot of things. For example, it's very easy to say that a building is revealed because it's so timeless. But what essentially does this timeless actually mean in terms of all the design decisions and physical results involved with the building? What are the nut and bolt of timeless design and architecture as per you? Over to you, sir. Yeah, well, yeah. it's a, it's a great, yeah, it's a it's a great question. I, I just wanted to say hello to everyone and uh, very excited to, to be here and discuss this uh, very interesting topic. I think you know today we're exposed to so much architecture, and right now I'm in actually Colorado. You guys are all around the world. And, you know, we can see what's going on everywhere in the world. And that's very exciting. I remember when I was an architecture student, you know, you had to go drive somewhere, you had to go to the library or something. Now you can like just search online and be exposed to all the incredible architecture that's happening around the world. And, you know, this is great, but it's also in some ways uh, a challenge because uh, it's very seductive to see beautiful images and, and very compelling things. And, and you know, when I was a, a student at, at Cornell, I also was seduced by all the books and, and the magazines that they had at, at, at the university, which I never was exposed to growing up in the suburbs of, of New York. Um, and I began to be highly compelled by all the beauty of the work. And then I, I had the opportunity to travel to many of these projects. And I began to realize that it's not how it looks, architecture. That's one thing, right? You can have beautiful drawings, you can have beautiful renderings, you can have you know, beautiful photographs. But really what it's about is the feeling, is the feeling you get in a place. And I learned very early on that you don't need to have something incredibly complex and dynamic to have a great feeling. And, and feeling is all the senses, right? It's, it's the smell, the taste, the sound. Uh, and I believe that in creating timeless architecture, one needs to to think about all these things, to think about how the building exists in its context, you know, in its physical context, in its metaphysical context, um, and really deal with universal and eternal uh, truths about creating the sensation of, of architecture and space. And that you know, sometimes in my mind goes more back to the classic notions of proportion, scale, materiality, sense of experience, procession through spaces, many of these things that that we've somehow lost in generating, you know, very seductive forms. And I personally have trouble with arbitrary form generation. And I'm going to show you guys in uh, a little bit later in the talk uh, this struggle that we have, you know, because we are looking for that eternal truth. We are trying to uncover it, and it's not something that we know from the beginning. It's something that we have to find and discover. So it's uh, I'll, I'll share with you how we how we go about that. That's that's great to hear. That um, it is something that kind of endures you to think about the basic functionalities of why the buildings are to be made at the first place rather than following the trends which are maybe perhaps uh, driven by market considerations or perhaps overtly uh, uh, being being possessive about the various forms which people would like to have. So, so in, in the essence, it tries to capture the, the, the basic necessity, the functionality which needs to be derived out of the building. Very well said. But, but my next question uh, gets to the same point which I've highlighted. In, in a trend uh, wherein we are witnessing increasing influences of market-driven decisions, or perhaps some other considerations, maybe uh, the, the, the aspiration to get into those design books, 
and, and get listed in the magazines. How does uh, one would like to uh, focus upon this timelessness in their architectural practice and design? Like what is the importance or the necessity to, to stop and hold back at the moment and to start thinking about the timelessness of the design as well? Yeah, well, I think you, you made a really uh, interesting point about function. And, you know, interestingly enough, like we, we start every project by, you know, multiple, from multiple perspectives simultaneously. One is like, uh, you know, what is the heart telling us, right? Like, what is, uh, what do we want it to feel like? What, do, what are the sensations? How can we enhance people's lives, right? How can we make the feeling of these places, um, you know, sensational and wonderful, right? Like if you're going to go through the effort, you might as well make it amazing, right? And, and make people feel good, right? And that's, that's what we're here for. And then there's also like the, the brain, right? Like the, the functionality, the flow. And, you know, we're simultaneously, you know, fusing those things together at every opportunity. So, you know, dealing with market conditions, uh, dealing with efficiency, right? Uh, we've never had a client, no matter how wealthy, tell us that budget is irrelevant. So, you know, at making the project appropriate for its uh, conditions, right? Is it a luxury project, a affordable project, um, all these things and balancing, you know, the role of the architect is when I think about it, it gets me nervous, right? You have to, you know, be a an artist, a mathematician, a builder, a engineer, all these things and, and understand marketing and, and, and sales and development and, and all these different aspects. And that's all going on, you know, in our heads simultaneously. Um, you know, so I think all these things have to flow together. And once you, you find that, that, that perfect balance that equilibrium between all these elements, you know, that's where it becomes, you know, what we think is like the truth, the answer, the, the sort of timeless solution that doesn't think about what you were talking about. Like, how can we get into the magazine? You know, how do we, how do we, like, I, I, I oftentimes start a talk about uh, the beauty of architecture without architects. You know, and I think there, there, it's a very interesting way to approach it, right? Like if you think about kind of ancient uh, architecture, you know, there was there was always uh, we have to build, and I'm not talking like palaces, like in India, and like wonderful architecture, but more like prosaic architecture, architecture that was just ordinary, right? And they built with materials that were nearby. They solved problems. Um, that were just basic fundamental problems. No one was thinking I'm going to be in the publication or I want to be a famous architect. They were just dealing with climate, shelter, how to create the most pleasurable uh, existence, right? Because, um, you know, when we didn't have technology like air conditioning and electricity and power and light, how do you how do you sort of mitigate the climate to create the most comfortable existence? And, and I like to look at those types of architecture. I like to approach a project with those, those eyes, you know, to see the way ancient people would see a project, you know, not about thinking about, you know, prestige and, Am I going to get a, a lot of uh, likes on the Instagram, you know, like, and, and is it going to be published? But thinking about, you know, solving these universal, um, you know, sensations of, of really mitigating climate and, and making a, an environment pleasurable. So, you know, functionality is, is really the backbone of, of what we do. And, and it's funny because we have to, we have to prove it to people because, you know, people see the fantastic architecture and they think like, well, you guys, you know, you're crazy. You don't think about, you know, practicality and stuff. And I'm like, no, it's actually, that's where we start. And, uh, you know, and it's a, uh, it's a big, we take it on as a, as a big responsibility.